Hi, third grade. In real time, I just got off the Zoom meeting with Mrs. Haling and you guys, and I miss you guys so much. I really, really do. Um, Beth asked if we can keep reading Where the Mountain Meets the Moon, and girl, yes, we can. Let's do it right now. Let me get comfy. You guys get comfy too. Get in a cozy spot. Get in your cozy corner at your house. This is Miss Bergman's cozy corner at her house. She's got all of her fun things here. She's got her plants. She's got things you guys have made for her. See, I've got some Abigail McClure in fifth grade made me this sweet little dragon. You know, I've got all the little things that make me happy here. I got my, my drink, wet my whistle, my Slytherin cup. Did you know Miss Bergman was a Slytherin? I am. All right, let's do it. Where the mountain meets the moon. Ooh. Oh, that's not my bones cracking. That's the chair creaking. Okay. So Min Lee has just heard the legend of Fruitless Mountain from the goldfish. And so now she wants to set out and do this herself. We're on chapter six and she is ready to go. Check out this picture on chapter six. She's packed up. She's heading out. Let's go. As Min Lee left the house, she was afraid some of her neighbors would stop her or ask where she was going. She felt she must look mysterious with a large bag on her back and full of excitement, but no one noticed her. The neighbors kept sweeping their doorways, hanging their laundry and preparing dinner. A boy and girl continued their fight over a pretend feast of mud. When the mother called them for dinner, both refused to move, each clinging to their dishes of wet dirt. Min Lee had to smile at their foolishness. So Min Lee walked right out of the village without causing a second glance. At the edge of the village, she turned toward Fruitless Mountain. At the bottom of the mountain, she unwrapped her blanket and took out her knife, needle, rice bowl, bamboo piece, and jug of water. Then, trying to remember all of the goldfish's instructions, she cracked off a small bit of stone and rubbed it up and down the needle 99 times before tossing it back to the ground. And then she filled a rice bowl halfway with water and let the bamboo float on it. After that, she picked up the needle and looked at the white rabbit on her bowl. Okay, she said to the jumping rabbit, lead the way. And she placed the needle onto the bamboo. Like magic, the needle spun around and Min Lee smiled. <clears throat> Do you guys know what she created? We can make them here too. Um, really the people who would know how to make these are Boy Scouts because that's who's um, kind of taught how to make these and, and Girl Scouts too sometimes but not always. More Boy Scouts um, because what did they make? What did she make? A compass. She made a compass. She rubbed a, a magnet, um, a rock, up and down the needle and it magnetized it and then she put it on the water. We would use like a leaf on the water instead of a bamboo piece, but she used bamboo. And so then the needle spins around and around and around towards north. And that's because it's magnetized. That's what she did. Thank you, Min Lee said again to the painted rabbit. Now I'll follow where you want me to go. Uh oh, ignore that. Min Lee packed up her things and, carefully holding the bowl in her hand, walked in the direction of the needle, past Fruitless Mountain. Goodbye, Jade Dragon, Min Lee said as she left. When I come back, I will know how to make you happy again. Min Lee walked and walked, and the stony land slowly turned into forest. Even when the moon was high in the sky, she continued. I want to make sure I walk far enough that if Ma and Ba begin to look for me, they can't find me, Min Lee said to herself. The fallen leaves made a soft carpet for her feet, and the night birds flew into the sky as she passed. Only when the sky lightened to gray and the sun began to peek over the horizon did Min Lee sit down and rest against a tall tree. She had traveled deep into the forest, far from her village and her home. She was so tired that she quickly fell asleep. Chapter seven. Oh no, look at this picture. It's Ma and Ba. 
and they can't find Min Lee and they're so sad. Look at their poor faces. The sun had set and the moon was just beginning to rise in the sky when Ma and Ba returned home from the field. Even though they could smell the steam from the rice cooking, they noticed the house was strangely dark and quiet. Why is Min Lee sitting in the darkness? Ma wondered as they approached the house. Perhaps she is sad about giving up her goldfish, Ba said as he shook his head. Can our fortune be any poorer? Ma sighed. We cannot even feed. Shoo! Oh, shoo! Shoo! Excuse me, you guys. Woo! Let me start again. Can our fortune be any poorer? Ma sighed. We cannot even feed a goldfish for our daughter. But as Min Lee's parents entered the house and read her note, Ma made a noise like a shrieking cat. I spoke too soon, she cried. Our fortune is now the worst, for our daughter is gone. Quiet, quiet, wife, Ba hushed her. If we move quickly, we can find her and bring her home. Ba hurriedly took out his cloth sack and gathered blankets and filled an empty bottle with water. She has had almost half a day to travel ahead, he said. It might take us some time to find her. Ma watched him and then began to pack the rice, uh, the cooked rice into a traveling box. But she continued to weep. It is all the stories you told her, Ma sobbed. She believed them and now is looking for fairy tales. Her words cut into Ba like slices from a knife. But even though his face was pained, he said nothing and continued to pack. His hands trembled as he tied the bag closed, but they were gentle when he put them on Ma's shoulders. Let's go, he said. As they left the house, many of the neighbors poked their heads out their doors. They had heard Ma scream through the thin walls of their closely, spa closely spaced houses and wanted to know what had happened. When Ma and Ba told them, it seemed as if the whole village poured out from their homes. Never ending mountain? The old man of the moon? Changing your fortune? The neighbors said, you better go find her or else she will never return. Foolish Min Lee, she is trying to do the impossible. Give me one second guys, I could blow my nose. You know how I have to do this usually in story time anyway. <laughs> Sorry, that's gross. Oh, that's so gross. Oh, Miss Bergman, why are you disgusting? Oh, I'm sorry. It's gone. It didn't happen. Never happened. Each villager pointed and nodded toward the direction they had seen Min Lee last. Some had seen her heading home. Others toward the rice field. But finally, a small boy was heard. Min Lee left toward Fruitless Mountain, he said. I saw her with her pack. She went that way. So with the villagers waving them goodbye, Ma and Ba walked toward Fruitless Mountain, their dark shadows trailing behind them in the moonlight. But when they reached the mountain, they looked at each other uncertainly. Where did she go from here? Ba wondered, and he lit the lantern in his hand. The soft light seemed to warm the air and soften the growing darkness. Here! Ma cried out, pointing to the ground. There are footprints going toward the woods. Maybe they are Min Lee's. Ba looked at the footprints. There was another mark accompanying them. A long pulling line. Ba pointed at them. But what is that? He wondered. Maybe Min Lee was dragging a walking stick, Ma said. The footprints could be hers. Ba looked again at the footprints. They seemed small and nimble. Perhaps they are, Ba said. Let's follow them. And so they did. Chapter 8. Here's another good picture here. Looks like Min Lee is at a river. Min Lee woke up when the sun was high in the sky and burning with light. Even, the shade of the for even in the shade of the forest, Min Lee's black head burned hot. As she woke up, she looked at her jug of water. Since she had used some of it for her compass, compass, see, we were right, it was a compass. Since she had used some of it for her compass and had drunk some during her, uh, her night walk, it was only half full. She sipped it and tried not to think about Ma and Ba finding her note. I hope they understand, 
Min Lee said to herself, shifting the weight of the water jug on her shoulders uncomfortably. Min Lee walked west again. A couple moments later, she sipped her jug again. She tried to drink sparingly, but even though the leaves of the uh, but even through the leaves of the trees, the yellow sun glared down at her. Soon her empty jug was bouncing again against her arm when she heard a faint noise running through the trees. That's water trickling, she said to herself as she turned toward the sound. There's water somewhere. Soon she noticed a small stream running with clear, sparkling water. She eagerly bent down to drink and fill her jug, but as soon as Min Lee tasted the water, blech, she spit it out. Salt water, Min Lee exclaimed. Blech, this water is salty. As she sat back, Min Lee began to wonder, how is this stream salty? I am far from the ocean. This is very strange. And unable to contain her curiosity, Min Lee forgot about her thirst and began to follow it. The stream widened and deepened, becoming more of a river than a stream. And just as Min Lee began to think that she should return to her journey, she began to hear deep moans that gently shook the earth. Who's there? Min Lee shouted. Help! A muffled voice whimpered. Can you help me? I'm coming! Min Lee called. She quickly put down her compass on the side of the water and waded in. The water was warm, like bath water, and clear as glass. Min Lee could see her feet and all the stones and leaves at the bottom of the stream. As she moved toward the voice, the water rose higher and higher, to her knees and then almost to her neck. Are you still there? The voice asked plaintively. Please help me. I'm coming, Min Lee called again. She took a deep breath and dove toward the voice. The salt water stung her eyes, so she closed them tightly until she broke through the surface. And when she finally opened her eyes, Min Lee almost sank back underwater with shock. Because there, in front of her, was a dragon. Chapter 9. Here's Min Lee's parents. Underneath the moon shadows of the trees, underneath the moon shadows of the trees, Ma stumbled with weariness. Ma did not know how long they had been walking. With every step he peered at the ground, the light flickering as the lantern swayed in his hand. The forest was full of shapes and shadows, and only barely could he see the faint footprints on the ground. It was like searching for a wrinkle in a flower petal. As Ma tripped, he steadied her with his arm. We should rest, Ma said. Ma shook her head and pulled away angrily. We must keep going. We must find Min Lee. But you are tired, Ma said, and I am tired too. We can rest, and afterward we will be able to continue faster. I am not tired, Ma said fiercely. Her irritation seemed to give her energy. If you are tired, you can rest, but I will continue to look for our daughter. We should stay together, Ma said quietly. If you wish to stay with me, Ma said, then you will have to keep going. Ma sighed and took out another candle for the lantern. The light from the lamp kept away the forest animals, but it could do nothing for Ma's fury. Her resentment seemed to darken with the fading moon, but as they walked, the morning bloomed in the distance. Its light slowly filtered over Ma and Ba through the veil of tree branches so he could finally blow out the candle in his lantern. He looked at Ma and could see that her bitterness was only sharper in the softening light. If Min Lee stopped to rest, Ba said, we may catch up with her soon. When we find her, Ma said, she must know that she is never to do this again. Never. Now why, Ba said, Min Lee did not leave to cause us harm. No, Ma said, her words cracking the air around her. She left to find a fairy tale. Never ending mountain 
and the old man of the moon. All of all the foolish things. Stories are not foolish, Boss said again in his quiet way. Says you, Moss said, because you are the one who filled her with them, making her believe she could change our miserable fortune with an impossible story. Ridiculous. Yes, Boss said sadly. It is impossible, but it is not ridiculous. Ma opened her mouth again, but stopped. For up ahead, there was a noise of breaking branches. It was the sound of someone pushing through the forest. Ma and Ba looked at each other. Min Li, Ma said. Forgetting their fatigue and frustration, Ma and Ba began to run through the woods. Ma ignored the branches that scratched her, and Ba let his hat fall to the ground as they rushed toward the unseen person. Min Li, they called. Min Li. But as they burst upon the figure ahead, they stopped in shock. It was not Min Li. Instead, Ma and Ba stared open-mouthed at the goldfish man. Chapter 10. Look at that, there's a dragon in the water. What? Do you think Min Li did it? I don't know. Min Li gaped at the dragon in front of her. He was, br he was brilliant red the color of a lucky lantern, with emerald green whiskers, horns, and a dull stone-colored ball like the moon on his head. At least, uh, at least what Min Lee could see of him looked like that, because he was also half covered by ropes of twine that had been tied, tied tightly around him, so he couldn't move, and by the silvery lake of water, his tears had formed around him. That was the stream, his tears. That's why they were salty. They were his tears. Oh, Min Lee had always thought it would be thrilling, but scary to meet a dragon. Her father's stories always made them sound so wise and powerful and grand. But here was a dragon before her, tied up and crying. Min Lee didn't feel awed by it at all. In fact, she felt rather sorry for it. Can you help me? The dragon sniffled. I am trapped. Min Li shook herself and started swimming toward the dragon. What happened to you? She asked. The monkeys tied me while I was sleeping, said the dragon said. I have been here for days. Min Li swam over to the dragon and climbed onto his back to get out of the water. There she opened her pack, took out the small, sharp knife she had brought with her and started cutting the twine. Why did the monkeys tie you up? Min Lee asked. Because I want to go farther into the forest to the peach grove, the dragon said, and the monkeys will not let anyone through. I have been trying to make them let me pass peacefully for days, but they are so unreasonable. Finally, I told them if they do not let me through, I would just force my way. They know I am big and strong enough to go through without their permission. So, when I went to sleep, they tied me up. Why won't the monkeys let anyone pass? Min Lee asked. Because they are greedy things, the dragon said. They have just discovered the peach trees that make up the next part of the forest. The monkeys do not want to let anyone through, because they do not want to share the peaches. Even when I promise not to touch any of the fruit, they would not let me through. They do not even want to share the sight of those peaches. Why do you have to go through the forest? Min Lee asked. Can't you just fly over? More tears the size of le leche nuts rolled down the dragon's face. I cannot, he sobbed. I do not know why. All other dragons can fly, but I cannot. I wish I knew why. Don't cry, Min Li said, patting the dragon, feeling more sorry for it than ever. I'm going to Never Ending Mountain to see the old man of the moon and ask him how to change my family's fortune. You can come too and ask him how to fly. You know where Never Ending Mountain is? The dragon asked. 
I thought to see the old man of the moon was, oh, I thought to see the old man of the moon was impossible. You must be very wise to know how to find him. Not really, Min Lee said. I got directions from a goldfish. Chapter 11. And it looks like this is, it's like a little ink pad. This is what they used to, um, back then, this is what they used to draw and paint on. And also, like, write things on. It took a long time for Min Lee to cut all the twine that bound the dragon. For some knots, she had to swim underwater and cut through the waving grasses. As she popped in and out of the water, cutting, she told the dragon all about her village, the goldfish, and how she had just started her journey. I'm Min Lee, she said to the dragon. What's your name? Name? The dragon asked slowly. I do not think I have a name. Everyone has a name, Min Lee said. When you were born, didn't someone give you a name? When I was born? The dragon asked, thinking hard. Yes, Min Lee said again, thinking that this dragon was very different from any dragon she had ever heard about. What did they call you when you were born? Here we go, Emma. Story of the Dragon. When I was born, I remember two voices speaking. Master, one voice said, this is magnificent. The dragon is almost alive. Add more water to the ink stone, another voice said. This voice was near my head. I felt the warm air of his breath. And speak quietly, you will wake the dragon. I am sorry, master, the first voice the first voice said in a more subdued tone. It is only that this painting is most amazing. Even for such a skilled artist as you, this dragon painting will bring great honor to the village when we present it to the magistrate. Wasted on the magistrate, the master said under his breath, so softly that only I could hear. A conceited, self-important man who, when only the imperial family is allowed to use the image of the dragon, commissions one. Now that his son has married the king's daughter, Magistrate Tiger will do anything to flaunt his power and outstretch his authority. But this painting will buy his favor and free the village from his unfair taxes. What, master? The apprentice said. Nothing, the master said, only that I have painted this dragon on the ground, not flying in the sky like all the other dragons. Perhaps the magistrate will see how his wealth weighs him down. I doubt the magistrate will understand that meaning, master, the apprentice said. True, the master said, but the dragon should still please him. I will prepare for his visit. The painting is finished. Clean the brushes and take great care with my special ink stone. It is one of a kind. The only ink stone that was able to be made from a rock my master cut from a mountain far from here. He never told anyone which mountain, so we can never make another. I bet it's never ending mountain. Do you think that too? I think that. Yes, master the apprentice said. But the dragon? Yes, the master said. Is it finished? The apprentice asked. You have not painted the eyes. As a painting, it is finished, the master said. Young apprentice, I still have much to teach you. And I heard the voices and footsteps fade away. It was a strange feeling. I felt the warm light of the sun running over my skin but my arms and legs were frozen. I could hear the wind rustling leaves in the trees and birds hopping on the ground, but I saw nothing. Time passed. I only knew because the air grew colder. I heard footsteps coming toward me, many of them, so I knew it was a whole procession of people. As you requested your magnificence, a voice said, I recognized it as the master's. May I present this, which I humbly painted, in tribute to the great magistrate's rule. 
There was a silence as all gazed, I suppose, at me. Painter Chen, another voice said in great awe. This is indeed a great work. Thank you, Magistrate, the Master said. I am glad it pleases you. Then our agreement will be fulfilled? Yes, said the voice. The village will be free from taxation for the next year, and I will take the painting. Even though I did not know exactly what was going on, I knew I did not want to belong to Magistrate Tiger. His voice had an undertone of cruelty and greed, even while he was expressing his pleasure. I tried to pro uh, protest, but my still lips uttered no sound. Then I was rolled up and all sound and feeling disappeared. I do not know how long I was rolled up. It might have been a day or a month or a year. All I could do was wait. But finally I was unrolled and I felt a cold gust of air all over me. If I could have, I would have shivered. This painting is a masterpiece, a voice said in surprise. And then it quickly turned oily and flattering. As only fitting for your greatness. Yes, Magistrate Tiger said. Have it hung behind my chair. Yes, Magistrate, the voice said, and then hesitated and said, How strange. What strange, the Magistrate asked. Well, the voice said, There are no eyes on this dragon. The painter must have forgotten. No eyes, the Magistrate boomed. Painter Chen dared give me an unfinished painting. I will double tax his village for the next 10 years. Magistrate, a third voice said, one that seemed a little kinder. It is only a minor flaw. If we just dotted the eyes, the dragon would be finished. Mm, yes, the magistrate said, obviously considering. Bring me a paintbrush and ink. I heard the servants shuffling. And bringing the paintbrush and ink, I felt the magistrate's hot, dry breath on my nose as he came close to me, and I felt the cold ink touch my eye. And suddenly I could see. I saw the magistrate's fat face leering over me as he reached over and dotted my other eye. As sight came into both my eyes, a warm feeling filled me, like drinking hot tea on a cold day. I felt strength come into my arms and hands and legs and feet, and my neck and head stretched for the first time. All the loud yells I had wanted to make now came rushing out of my mouth, and I gave a huge roar that made the magistrate fall over. There's a painting of the magistrate dotting the eyes, and the other two voices there telling him, uh, giving him advice and such. It has come alive, I heard him gasp, and I heard the servants screaming, Dragon! It has come alive! Dragon! I knew this was my chance to free myself from Magistrate Tiger. I jumped from where I was and rushed over everyone, knocking down desks and chairs and columns. I saw the blue sky and green leaves through a window, went toward it, and simply crashed through the wall to get through. As I left the building was as I left the building was falling down and all the people were yelling dragon they screamed dragon I knew I had to leave as soon as possible so I ran as fast as I could into the forest and left them far far away I have lived in the forest since then So I think the dragon said my name is dragon because that is what everyone called me Dragon, Min Lee repeated, and she tried not to smile. Well, I guess it's a good enough name. It will be easy for me to remember. The dragon nodded, pleased to have found himself a name. So you were born from a painting, Min Lee said. That explains why you are so different from the dragons my father told me about. Your father knew other dragons? The dragon asked eagerly. I have never seen another dragon. 
I always thought if I could fly, I would see another like me. Um, well, Min Lee said, I don't think my father ever knew any dragons. He just told stories about them. Most people think dragons are just in stories. You are the only dragon I've ever met. Oh, the dragon said sadly. And I am not even a real dragon. All this time, Min Lee had been cutting the twine ropes. At this very moment, Min Lee cut the last rope and rubbed the dragon's arm. You're the only dragon I've ever met in real life, she said. And you feel real to me. So I think you're a real dragon. Or at least real enough. Anyway, if, you're, if we're going to Never Ending Mountain together, let's at least be real friends. Yes, Dragon agreed, and they both smiled. All right. What a lovely place to stop. Oh my goodness, we're now on chapter 12, you guys. We started on chapter six, so we read like six chapters together. Um, wow, that's super exciting. Um, you guys, I don't know if you know, if you or if you remember, I haven't read this book, and um, thank you, Emma, for picking this book and for, like, pushing me to read this, because it's, like, a really good book. It's really, really fun. It's, like, a really fun book. I love it so much. Um, if you guys want to, like, comment down below and, like, leave me comments and, like, ask questions about the story, that would be super fun. Um, I would love that. I will comment back, and I'll give you comments back. Um, I will message Miss Hailing when I do these so that you guys know when to go on YouTube to look them up. And, um, yeah, stay active, stay busy, wash your hands. Please, please wash your hands. Um, thank you guys. I miss you guys. I love all of you. Bye.